There we go. All right. Hey, Coffee Time with P Dub. Good morning, everybody. I'm excited morning. about today's show. We got our boy DC Danny Dimes from Twitter. Uh, we're going to be doing a little UFC talk, a little handicapping talk in general, talking about some challenges that we have specifically regarding what we do for a living and dealing with customers, clients, some not even paying. And so how are we doing this morning, Danny? Doing good. Got the coffee, yeah. ready to go. Look over the UFC card, final things. Got baseball today, derby, exciting day. So you do it all? I mean, are you uh, you handicap? I mean, I'm you know what, handicap horses to fighters? What's up? You handicap horses to fighters? Horses to fighters, that's right, yeah. Not so much the horses, I don't, I don't handicap myself. I like to get information. So it's just reading the right information from the right people, trusted sources, stuff like that. So just uh, just for the people, you mm -hmm. know, where do you, where do you lay your wagers? Are you wager, wagering overseas or with a local, or you know, you got a runner in Vegas like myself? What do you what do you do? I do mostly local, but I try to when I if I'm doing out any kind of free plays or anything in the VIPs, I try to use Bovada lines just because it's the most readily available. No one can say, oh, I don't have this because nothing's worse when a handicapper is putting plays out. And you go find it, like, I don't even have that option. Like, that's not even, it's not there. Where'd you find this? Right. So if I can't find it on my local or Bavada, I just, I, I'll probably just play it myself and not even announce it. Or if I do, I'll put a little post up, hey, for what it's worth, I'm just, I'm playing this if you can find it. But right try to be open about that. Like, hey, it's not probably something available that you can find everywhere. Right on. Hey, and so are you a unit guy or are you kind of a feeling guy? So as far as like, are you super organized with your bets and you like have a certain system? Or are you like, okay, on tonight on the, you know, stamen fight. I'm just, I got a feeling it's going to go 500 bucks or a thousand or whatever it is. No, no, I keep it, I keep it pretty organized. And that was one thing that I try to work on all of last year was the money management, like really hone in on it. Um, I go one to three units. Okay. I will throw in some like 0.25 units or half units on some like long, like long shots or, you know, parlays or something like that. I might, I might take on, but um, overall one to three units, probably 90% of my plays, 80% of my plays are one unit. And then probably five to ten percent are around our two units, and the three units don't happen often. Um, usually, that's when I have a strong opinion about something, and then somebody else that I trust or like know that they're an expert in, or I read an article that's like something sticks out where I'm like, you know what, this might be the opportunity to cash in. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but usually I'm, I'm hitting around 67, 68 percent on uh, three unit plays. Um, we dropped one this week in tennis, but. It happens, you know. What are you gonna do? But at damn, 63. you got tennis in there too. I love it, man. I probably should be getting more information from you. I can make some money while I sleep. I got <laughs> international tennis, right? Oh yeah, oh, um, like two or seven, three sixty-five too. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, is it? Oh yeah. Is it? See, is it? tennis is not my thing either. UFC is not my thing either, and that's kind of why we're here today. But hey, before we get into that, mm. let me ask you. So I got a message from a client, or not even a client this morning. It's from a guy that took my free pick. I had my free pick last night with the Lakers. They lost outright to the Kings. I'm seven and two in my last nine. Yes, this guy just started tailing my free picks, but my premium package went five and zero oh last night, and I had a fucking great night. Team is stoked, but I got these guys that didn't even have never paid me and are chirping in my ear. I lost three thousand seven hundred fifty bucks. You're a piece of shit. Blah blah blah. You, you're trash. And I'm like. Dude, my premium package went five and zero. Oh. Yes, you you could have paid me sixty bucks for the weekend. How much did this guy premium package? How much amount did he lose? He said he lost thirty seven hundred, but he was too cheap to pay sixty bucks for the full. That's product. what I told him. Oh, no. I told exactly. I told him, okay, <laughs> for sixty bucks, you could have had the whole weekend, all my best plays, which went five and zero oh yesterday. Which you on five and one with the freebie, and yeah. then no complaints. Exactly, or he didn't have to take the freebie because he had five. So I mean. And the messages come in and they're pretty aggressive. Do you do you experience, you know, messages like that from even non-paying customers on a regular basis like I do? It doesn't happen. I mean, honestly, it doesn't happen often, you know. I, I think those people usually have like no avatar or anything, you know, four posts, follow like a handful of people. So I, I take that with a grain of salt. Usually it's nobody even like it's not even like a real person. <laughs> yeah, usually they're from a burner accounts. I mean, you see yeah. that, I don't know, in the gambling industry a lot where people don't they don't want to use their real account to talk shit, right? Yeah. But me and you come on here and we show our faces and put ourselves out there with these these plays, and these people can't even show their face or come up with their real account. It's right. It's pretty humorous. But, well, it makes uh, you wonder if they even put thirty seven hundred dollars on the free bet, anyways. You know, probably probably not. Like thirty seven dollars, you know, which is fine. Yeah. That's your thing. 
I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna tail a free pick for thirty seven hundred bucks, I told him, hey, because I'm a I'm a unit guy too. I have a one to ten unit system, and I told him, I even showed my ticket. I showed my ticket to everybody, and that was a two unit play, right? And it was my lowest, you know, ranked play of the day. So he's betting, you know, the most money that he probably ever has on a play that is my lowest ranked of the day, which doesn't even it doesn't even make sense. No, it's like you should have a disclaimer for common sense. It's just comedy sometimes, but um. So let's get let's get into a little UFC talk. Again, you're the guru. You know, I'm the novice. I do it, watch it as entertainment. You know, a lot of the times, or I get information if I do wager from somebody like yourself, mm -hmm. um, because it's not something that I cap closely. Um, so I want to get into your mind a little bit and find out. You know, what are you looking at when you cap? You know, um, what what are the what are the key factors that you you are analyzing? Are you just watching these fights and really catch a feeling? Is that how UFC is capped, or is there a lot of data behind it? For fighting, I like to just watch the fights. To can be completely honest, take notes when I'm like, I, even if I'm in the bar, I just take some notes on my, my phone. Uh, you know, hey, this guy's got a good chin. This guy is great on the ground. Like, look how he defended this. Especially if it's like a newer guy that's like maybe it's like UFC debut or something on like a prelims card. Um, I think you can get a lot of uh, good good note taking early on in someone's career. Like, this guy's gonna be a banger one day. Like, there, there's been a lot of fighters, especially over COVID. I really got back in the UFC uh, fights because it's the only thing on. And I really started paying close attention to it. And, um, you know, just take taking those notes. Some of these guys, you know, fought four or five times last year um, and really had an opportunity to get uh, get good experience in UFC. And some of them have made it and are, you know, ranked contenders now. It's beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So let's get into a couple of these fights tonight. Um, we talked a little bit before, you know, we went on the podcast. You wanted to break down three fights, but one of these fights we uncovered right before the podcast. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, there's there's an issue. When you're making these plays early in the week because you got the weigh in. So, you know, you might not always want to go full board on these because a lot, a lot can happen. You know, you watch the weigh ins on Friday. Um, and, you know, usually I, I try to get it, try to watch them live. But if not, I try to check them first thing on Saturday morning, like we would normally today, but we found out that the Benitez uh, Pierce fight is off the board because Benitez didn't make weight and Pierce is refusing to fight him now. So that's just, that's just really bad. I mean, that's lazy and it's probably good because I was, it's probably good the fight's not on because if he's coming in overweight, he probably didn't have a really good camp. He, uh, you know, probably wasn't taking this fight seriously. And the way I look at it, I just saved possibly 4.3 units because I was laying minus 215 for two units. This is one of my bigger plays um, on the card uh, this weekend. So, again, it, it it's all about, you know, if you're going to make an early wager to kind of, you know, get some closing line value, which is very important in UFC because this – I mean, I didn't check where it was yesterday. I was going to check, again, check today, see how the weigh-ins went, see where the line has moved. I mean, that line could have moved to minus 250 from 215 early in the week. Really good closing line value. But, hey, if, if he would have taken the fight, I mean, I would have had to consider um, backing off that and taking – going the other way. Right, right. Hey, so on the CLV, the closing line value, you want to break down maybe just real briefly for, for the people that are watching what that truly means? Well, it's, I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, like you said here, we got, um, I wish I, I don't know if we can pull these odds up now. I'd like to see what some of the two, two fights we're going after right now, what the lines are. But basically, you know, if you can get, when the lines come out, you're going to get your best value because the books, you know, they make, they make a line. And say, you see the same thing in baseball. It's probably easier for people to understand in baseball better. When the lines come out the night before in baseball, you know, and you have you know, good good pitching, that's only going to go up. Once the public sees the number and it's released at all the books, everybody's going to be hammering Kershaw, for example. Right. Kershaw will go from a minus, you know, 220 against some, like, shit team to, you know, minus 280 or 275, something like that. And you're losing 50 cents of value or more. Um, it, it, it's, it's not a good recipe for um, long-term success. There and you go. Lee, um, I've learned that the hard way, <laughs> but you know, you're, we're always learning as uh, as gamblers. That's for sure. So let's let's look at this. I'm going to look up some of the current lines. We're going to break them down. Um, yeah, I'm looking. And you tell me if you got good closing line value. Um, well, let's we can go ahead if you want and jump right into it. Um, yeah, jump. Let's let's jump right into that that stamen fight. Yeah, the stamen fight. Uh, do you, that I mean, these fights, these guys from like Georgia and stuff like that. We were talking about this before we got on. It's it's harder to it's harder to pronounce these guys' names than it is to actually cap the fights. So, uh, <laughs> we'll call him Devo. Okay, I got Devo in this fight. 
I got it minus 245 and I'm laying two units on this one. And I'm looking at it right now on Bovada and it went up to 280, 85 right now. So we got 40 cents of closing line value for the VIPs. And then as we release this, you know, you know, that's the advantage of being in a VIP, I feel like. I'm sure you can attest to the same thing. Absolutely. Lines. I mean, I, I've, I've seen them. I've missed some of your free plays before. I try to jump in like last minute on those West Coast games, and it's moved a half point in NBA. So, or if a money line has, has gone up, you know, 20 cents. And it doesn't seem like a lot, but I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hundred to three hundred dollar better um, for per unit. So, you know, that that ends up being a lot of money in the end. Oh, if, for sure. If you're using 40 cents. You know, it's different if you're, you know, only betting like 10 bucks a game. But so, I mean, tell me, so I'm going to I'm going to tell you tonight. Tell me why I'm, I'm rocking with, uh, you know, Deval tonight. Oh, Deval, Yeah. Hey, two straight. Uh, he's, he's lost two straight in his first UFC and he's come off and uh, knocked off five in a row. Uh, same has been looking. Uh, he's been looking to rebound after his last uh, UFC appearance. He's five, two and one in the UFC. So it's not bad. But I expect this to kind of be a, a grinding fight. Um 21 of these vic 21 of the victories combined with these two have gone to decision and they've both been involved in 25 decisions as well so i just expect this to be like a, a wrestling match um on the ground drawn out um d has got he's got superb wrestling and ground game um he's got a gas tank like not many so i think he's gonna be able to get, score often he thinks he's gonna get get on get on the ground get those points get ground control and i think you're gonna see a decision tonight in this fight Beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'm tailing Deval tonight. Me and you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what? I will? I'll promise you one thing. Even if it doesn't go our way, I'm not going to be sending you fucking messages. All right, good, good. Yeah. Messages. <laughs> you're you're minutes, are you? <laughs> All right. So we got uh, the fight. The second fight you want to break down is the Swanson fight. Yeah, yeah. What are you looking at? So you, you got the lines up too, or no? Yeah, I got. Well, I got Swanson. He's a dog. 147. Um, Chikazi at, at my, minus 177. Yeah, so, what lying, I'm so I got a bad line on this. I got bad closing line value. I took, um, I took, uh, I was laying two dollars on this one, um, okay. in the week. So this one had moved against us. Uh, Chikazi's he's he's won his first six UFC fights. Um, I've been pretty impressed by him. He's won 12 of the last 14. Uh, Swanson, he's he's a old veteran, he's 37 years old, so he's up there in age. He's had a lot of experience, though. A lot of experience. And this guy's he's tough, he's tough as nails. Um, but he's a loser in his four of last six fights. Um, so I like to, in, in the UFC, especially when you're getting older, I, I, you see these guys, they take a loss and they just keep piling up and it gets kind of sad, you know, when they start getting older, <laughs> just getting their heads beaten in, but you know, he's got, he's very experienced. So, I mean, I can see why people see value in the dog here. I just think Chikazi a much better fighter. I think he's more experienced. He's a, he's a kickboxer. Um, and he's got a four inch reach and like physical size advantage here. Um, and I think that's going to be uh, important. I think I think he's going to grind out the win here. So you're thinking you thinking this one will go to decision as well? I really do. I think both of them, the, the two fights, the, the two fights that we're, we're talking about here, I think they're both going to go to decision. Yeah. So do you think is there value? Right? Mm -hmm. Is there value in, in like the prop bet or, or whatever you would consider it? Like you know, win by decision is. Oh, oh absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, we can. I mean, we can pull this up right here for this fight. I'm looking on uh, the Vada lines right now, and. Yeah, the fight, will the fight go the distance? You got uh, if you think yes, if you think it's going to distance. You only got to weigh a dollar thirty instead of laying two hundred, or you go for the underdog and you know get what plus one eighty five. I think it is right now. Right, right, all right. Well, I'll be. I'm going to tell both picks, and we'll see how we do. Um, yeah, there's so many ways to play UFC. It's it's great um, in terms of how many uh, props you can you can bet on. You know, even if you think it's going to be like. Like I said, we think both these fights are going to be, you know, a grinded out kind of match. And I think if, if you think it's going to go to decision, but the fighters you think might be kind of equal, it might might pay off just to, you know, lay the 130 and get a decision. So typically, I mean, so this card is this entire card is being sent to your to your paying customers as well. Correct. And you're getting you know, out in, the in the week. Yeah, Man, I, I got more on the card, too. I just was going over the, the two unit. The Well, I was going to have two two unit plays with the, the Benitez and Pierce fight. Um, but him not making the weight. We only have two, uh, I would say, premium plays. Um, and then we have uh, three one unit plays and then three uh, half unit kind of long shot plays. So he's gonna, uh, Danny's gonna send me the card, or, or we're gonna tweet the card out. The entire card, absolutely free. Uh, yes. It's on the house by uh, DC Dimes here, and uh, so Taylor's picks. 
He's got strong UFC experience and success in the UFC specifically, as well as other sports. So hit up DC Dimes directly or tail this free card. Hey, but don't send them any dirty messages if, if, they, if they don't go if they don't go your way. All right, but uh, Danny, I think uh, it was a pleasure having you on the show. I appreciate you breaking. Nice having me on, man. It's awesome. Congrats on the the podcast. This is good. I, I appreciate it, man. It's 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 a lot. It's a good time. So I'm really interested. Uh, to see you got is your crypto guy. You keep talking about. You keep hyping that uh, up. I'm um, dude. I'm pumped. I am you pumped. Your that. Accounts, you check your your accounts this morning. How, uh, dude, Bitcoin, Ether is still going up strong. I got. I just got some Litecoin. So. But, but check out tell tell is tell is gonna be big it's uh it just it just reached a penny so tell t-e-l okay. um my guy that i'll have on the podcast that's one of his coins that he's watching okay. and so that just popped over a penny last night i got it for a half a penny and so i've got like i don't know over five hundred thousand shares and so um you know that goes to a penny we're we're, we're chilling that's true that's all. yeah you're, you're, you're on the beach <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, man. So again, it was appreciate. I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, we'll have you on again. I think uh, Danny's going to be a regular. So we'll be breaking down not only UFC with Danny, but other sports on the regular. And uh, I think I think that's it for us this morning. But I uh, appreciate you come top, tapping in with uh, P-Dub and drinking some coffee and talking some UFC, Danny. Oh, yeah, man. Looking forward Let's to get it. these dubs, brother. Thank you. All right, bro. Have a All great right. day, man. All right. You too. All right.